Hi, uh, I have uh, decided to make a video um, because I felt the need to uh, give some more explanations uh, on what I meant in the article that I wrote on uh, Maxwell's theory of electromagnetic waves, which is called uh, Trouble with Maxwell's Electromagnetic Theory. Um, and I hope that this video will help you follow the article a bit uh, easier and understand the main points in there. Uh, so, uh, really the main idea of the article was to outline, emphasize the fact that um, we have a we may have a problem with uh, our understanding of what light waves and radio waves really are. Uh, because if you go uh, to all the textbooks today and uh, you discuss with all the researchers and uh, teachers, professors, and um, see what is being said about light and radio waves, they are said to be electromagnetic. Uh, for ex by this is meant that they are believed to be made up of electric fields and magnetic fields that uh, oscillate perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travels. So this is, for example, one example from a, from a very recent textbook that shows this picture. Observe that the wave is believed to be to have a magnetic and an electric component. Now, I don't have an issue with the magnetic part. I have an issue with the electric part because I think it's not there. So in my opinion uh, light waves and radio waves are only magnetic and not electromagnetic. And here are the main ideas that uh, I'd like to discuss. First is uh, light and radio waves are very a very special type of waves. Uh, they're unlike any other waves that we have around us. For example, sound, um, water surface waves, uh, waves in the road. They need a medium to travel through. Um, sound cannot propagate uh, if there is no substance to transmit the vibrations. Uh, this is how we hear sounds. Uh, if you try to transmit sound through a vacuum, it will not be transmitted. However, light and radio waves uh, travel not only through substances, but also through vacuum. Uh, light can travel through the air, through water, through ice, through glass, okay, through transparent substances, transparent plastics. Uh, radio waves can travel even through uh, opaque substances that substances that are not transparent like wood, uh, concrete, uh, clothes, um, um, other hard substances, plastics uh, that are not transparent. Uh, so they travel through this substance but can also they, they can also travel through vacuum which makes them very different from what sound is. And because they travel through vacuum, we have a difficulty in understanding why they can propagate like that through something that we think it is empty. Well, those of you who know uh, some of my works uh, will remember that I don't think that vacuum uh, is actually empty. I think that what we call vacuum is actually filled with a very uh, basic substance, very simple substance called ether, which is in a liquid state. Uh, but even if you take the ether as a simple substance, which is a liquid, uh, it is neutral. It doesn't have free electrons. It doesn't conduct electricity. So it is very uh, hard to see how electric fields can exist in, in the ether. Uh, but if you go back to what textbooks say, they don't even discuss the ether. They discuss uh, the fact that these fields are in, exist in empty space where there is nothing. So how to come to terms, how to agree with this picture uh, where uh, there is an electric field in the empty space but there are no charges. We know that charges produce the electric field. 
So um, if you don't have charges, you don't have electric field, therefore in vacuum, because you don't have anything, you don't have electric charges, how come you can have an electric field? Now, if you ask this question to uh, someone uh, uh, in the physics field, uh, they will tell you probably this, that, you know, you don't need to have um, charges in order to have an electric field because uh, there is an effect uh, that we know of uh, by which uh, the electric field can be produced by a changing magnetic field. Well, if you go back and search what is the experimental background behind this idea uh, that supports this idea is uh, actually Faraday's electromagnetic induction. So um, it is based on the fact that when you insert a magnet in a coil uh, there is an electric current flowing in the coil. This is, this is the direct uh, connection. This is, the, this is what it is based off. So electric fields it is believed to uh, exist in vacuum because of this effect that uh, of electromagnetic induction. Now, if you think about it, the situations are so different. Here you have a coil. In vacuum you don't have a coil. In vacuum there is nothing. So, um, this is the problem with uh, the existence of electric fields in a vacuum. And if you go back to uh, Faraday's effect, um, Remember, what we observe is an electric current that flows in the circuit. For example, uh, this experiment, which is also in textbooks, it is explained, it is here. This is how it looks like. So you have a magnet, and uh, when you insert it in the coil, uh, there will be an electric current measured by the, uh, by the instrument. Now, um, the fact that there is an electric current flowing in the coil when you insert a magnet cannot be explained uh, only by saying that there, there is an electric field in the coil. Uh, because this is what today's theory says. Uh, the changing magnetic field will produce an electric field in the coil and this electric field pushes the charges. What I believe is that the changing magnetic field pushes the charges directly without uh, assuming, because this is an assumption, that there is an electric field to push the charges. So, um, you will probably ask, but how come? How is it possible that the magnetic field push the charges directly? Well, we have a few examples in which the magnetic field acts on charges. For example, we have Lorentz force, the force that uh, deflects uh, electric charges when passing through a magnetic field. So, uh, in this case, there is no electric field in there. There is an electric charge passing through the field and the field acts on the charge and changes its direction. This is one example. And another example is uh, when the charge is spinning and it has a magnetic moment. Well, if you have a magnetic moment in a magnetic field gradient, which is not uniform, but it has a gradient, then this uh, magnetic moment will be acted on by by the field and will be pushed or pulled depending on the gradient, direction of the gradient. So there are two situations in which uh, we have magnetic fields acting directly on charges and the fact that we think uh, that the changing magnetic field in Faraday's effect is producing an electric field first, which pushes the charges, is an assumption. Therefore, the existence of electric fields in radio waves and light waves is an assumption. 
this is the idea of the article. And uh, in the article I have offered these explanations and I actually believe that what happens in electromagnetic induction is that when uh, you insert a magnet in the coil, uh, the uh, magnet produces um, a magnetic field gradient along the turns, the conductor of the coil, and this magnetic field gradient is that which pushes the charges. Um, these are the main ideas of the article. I uh, have continued this uh, with the other two in which I explain how this uh, is actually giving uh, consistent explanations of how we receive radio waves. We receive radio waves uh, because the changing magnetic field of the wave acts on the charges in the antenna through electromagnetic induction. So this is how we have currents in the antenna. and also, uh, how we explain the photoelectric effect uh, in this picture, because um, the changing magnetic field of the wave uh, acting on the surface will induce uh, in the surface uh, currents which have the direction perpendicular to the surface, and inside and outside, both inside and outside. And the faster, which is uh, means the higher the frequency of the wave, the faster the electrons are ejected. And this is consistent. This is consistent to what we observe and actually solves the problem that we had in uh, explaining the photoelectric effect, which was why electrons are ejected with greater velocities when the frequency of the light wave is greater. Yeah? Because that's in, in uh, in this effect, is uh, this is an example of uh, electromagnetic induction. Faraday's is a, it's an example of Faraday's uh, effect of electromagnetic induction. So I hope that the main ideas are a bit clearer now. And if you have questions, I will answer them, answer them, and try to explain these things a bit more. So, thank you.